what's in the box? What's in the fucking box? Hello ladies and gents and welcome back to What's in the Box. I'm Jack and I'm going to take straight away a swig of this coffee because it's going cold. It's good coffee, cheers to you. So, big box PC game collectors Facebook group strikes yet again and something really cool has arrived for me in the post today. I must quickly, right off the bat, give a shout out to the man who sent it to me. Really, really nice man. A gentleman, I would say. Andres Ortega, thank you very much. This one came from him. He has, in the past, given me some fantastic deals on games that are quite hard to find. You're an absolute gentleman for sending this one over to me and I'm really, really looking forward to opening it today. I'm gonna to get right into it, the best part. And it's such a, uh, it was so nicely packaged. You know, you don't, you just don't get that from people who don't know anything about big boxes. The, the men and women who know about the big boxes, send them the correct way with lovely cardboard boxes. Right, I'm gonna get it open. So here we are, ladies and gents. Loom by Lucasfilm Games. What an unusual game. What an unusual cover. What is this? What is this game? Look at these hands. What is this game? Loom. So Loom is yet another Lucasfilm point and click game. The game was released in 1990 and it had a few it had like most LucasArts games, it had few a few versions. It obviously went from floppy disk version to CD version with audio and stuff like that. But this of course is the Amiga version, so that would lead me to believe that it is floppy disks. But yeah, it's in great condition, great nick, lovely cover again. It's such a weird game, I haven't played it yet properly, but it kind of takes the point and click interface and changes it with these magical spells that you do using notes on a musical scale. It's very strange, it's uh, very hard to explain. But it's a game that I have been looking forward to playing because it's so different. Of course, it's by Brian Moriarty. Really, I think that's kind of one of the... It's one of his games that he's known for, is Loom. I'm not really sure what else he was involved with in the times of Lucasfilm and LucasArts. If anybody does know, let me know down in the comment section below. But yeah, Brian Moriarty certainly was known for Loom. And of course, the art was done by the wonderful M. Ferrari. That's Mark, Mr. Mark Ferrari. He is one of the best 8-bit, 16-bit artists, 8-bit-ish artists I have ever come across in my life. He ha He's known for doing the EGA version of Monkey Island. He's known for doing the art 16-color EGA loom. And of course, some of these covers were done by Mark Ferrari. This is a Mark Ferrari drawing, of course, but it says it down there. Really, really cool. He also did, most recently, did a lot of work for Thimbleweed Park. Background art, again on the PC. Absolutely fabulous. I think this box is in absolutely brilliant condition, which is excellent. It's in top nick. I know there's one or two little just stains here and there, but I think I'll be able to get them out with a little bit of TLC in the future. Nothing is badly damaged though it's all the box is still kept its shape it's in really good condition which is great I'm very happy about that yeah so here we are <coughs> uh, coughing for the men yeah and it's got it's a fantasy adventure so I'm gonna zoom in here again so we can see the back of the box just a little better ah uh, lovely the phone is going off I must answer that so that phone call that I just got was a Windows technical support <laughs> which is quite funny and it clearly was a phishing scam, but it's just hilarious that they are still ringing people around the world. Like, surely at this stage, I hope uh, Windows phishing scams are common knowledge. Uh, yes, but as soon as he heard that I wasn't the owner of the house, uh, <laughs> he hung up the phone immediately, clearly trying to go off and scam someone else out of their money. So be aware of that, ladies and gents. Anyway, back here. So. We are helping young Bobbin, basically, that's our character, a young weaver, and we can ha we can use <coughs> magical spells and stuff like that, that he clearly learned from being a weaver and playing with the loom and stuff like that. 
I believe this game ends on a bit of a like cliffhanger, I've read. <clears throat> it was supposed to be a trilogy, I think, but I'm not really 100% sure whether Loom sold very well at the time or not. Fantasy games, <clears throat> Jesus. Fantasy games in general, I suppose, were being sold hugely in America anyway by Sierra Online with King's Quest that the loom I suppose kind of got swept under the rug a little sadly but it looks great it's a really fabulous looking game that Mark Ferrari art is, is brilliant like it's it's top class just what he did with only 16 colors particularly on the EGA version is pretty mad but it looks great in VGA of course as well so I'm gonna get it open anyway Right, so here we are, removing, <coughs> oh I have a very bad cough, removing the cover. Here we are. So, yet again I've come across these before, if you've seen other What's in the Box videos. Here is a code reader for basically, their DRM solution back in the day was you had to have a book and you had to have this little red code reader in order to be able to read the code that would allow you to progress in the game. But of course, for, like I own this on GOG, so it's not really needed very much anymore. But it's nice to have, to be fair. Do you know, we'd all love to have the IBM versions of all the games that we love. But of course, the thing is, is that they just do get very expensive. And I'm not too pushed considering I do own this on GOG. And that's great that GOG have put out Bloom. So we get our three Amiga discs. Disc three, two, and one for Amiga 500 up to Amiga 2000 at the time. Uh, I'd love to have an old computer that wasn't IBM based or compatible because I think they're very, it's a very like forgotten time in computing at the moment. These older computers like the Commodore 64, um, of course uh, like a, an Amiga 500 to 2000, you would the older Macintosh with PowerPC of course which is kind of a dead thing because everything uses Intel now. It's just a really interesting time and I would love to own one of those all rounder machines that kind of died out really I suppose once I, the IBM and its compatibles took over and PCs just became uh, I suppose they, they just came compatible with each other once Windows kind of started coming in, Windows 95 and, 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 and upwards. Yeah, it's just really interesting. I think it's an interesting time. Anyway, right, so we've got the Loom manual in black and white. I know I've been talking on here now for a while. A Fantasy by Brian Moriarty. Characters designed again here by Gary Winnick, strangely enough. And I didn't know, I knew that Stephen Purcell did a bit of, uh, uh, he did art for quite a lot of the LucasArts games at the time, the early 90s. But I didn't know that he did animation as well, which is interesting there. Yes, yeah, so we've got how to play the game, of course. Things to try on the island of Loom. Loom is the island. That now I didn't know. I thought, so the island itself is called Loom. So we have a Lucasfilm product guide, I think. This now is very old looking. I've never seen one of these yet in person, so this is a first for me. Oh yeah, this is a really old looking product guide. A flip up product guide. Very reminiscent of the Prince of Persia 2 box. Here we are, Maniac Mansion. Selling Maniac Mansion. That now is weird, like, product guides for Maniac Mansion. <laughs> it just seems such like an old thing. Unreal. Battle Hawks 1942. Oh, we've got, of course, Zach McCracken here, which is a David Fox game and goes for absolute oodles of cash. Pipe Dream here, another game that's uh, just, you know, everybody's played some version of Pipe Dream. If you've played Bioshock, you've played Pipe Dream. Uh, Loom here again, selling the game that I already have, which is quite interesting. Um, oh, and little t-shirts and stuff, and mouse pads. T-shirts, yeah, a Loom t-shirt. That'd be cool, and a Zach McCracken t-shirt. I think I've seen David Fox in that exact Zach McCracken, well not that exact, but uh, Zach McCracken t-shirt but he has a t-shirt like that that he wears from time to time on interviews and stuff that I've looked up on YouTube. A hint book of course for the games and then finally here just some more uh, the Loom compact disc here the magical story and superb soundtrack of Loom on one full fidelity limited edition compact disc. Uh, yes so sadly of course with this version um, Andres didn't have it in the game it did not come with, it originally came with a tape cassette. Some people that are watching this may never have heard of a tape cassette, but a tape cassette 
is basically the way people used to listen to music when they didn't have a lot of money back in the day to pay for CDs or vinyls, even though vinyls were pretty much phased out at that stage. And the tape cassette holds the like prologue story or basically the story throughout the game. And you're supposed to play this tape at certain points in the game while playing. And it kind of tells you more about the story and it's like voice acted and stuff like that. It's actually on YouTube and I will link it below. It's worth checking out. But of course, sadly, uh, Andres didn't have this within the box that he was sending me, so it kind of was lost to time or whatever. But what I'm thinking of doing is I'm actually thinking of making up my own cassette for this loom box, which I think would be really nice. And I'll just get like, you know, the artwork and I'll print that out in some way. But anyway, continuing on, sadly about that, but a reference guide or, I oh don't know, one of these, yeah, you send your post in, basically customer information for Lucasfilm. A reference card, of course. What what good LucasArts box would be free of a reference card? So there you go, there's kind of, again, a close-up of their weird system that they have in play with that musical stave using crotchets of different notes on the stave. And then you can actually correspond notes on the keyboard to the notes on that stave. Very interesting, very looking forward to checking out that in the future. So that's a reference card, that's just, you know, your controls and your kind of quick reference for playing the game. Oh, I think finally, unless there's something else under it, if there's something else I'll go for that first. So yeah, that's where actually the cassette would have went. So sadly, yeah, the cassette is gone. That's fine, I'm okay with that because I did get this for a really, really good price. But here we go, here are the book of patterns. This is back in the day when they used to do really, really top class workmanship on their guides and stuff. So the Book of Patterns, I believe, I think you use this with it. I'm not 100% sure. I've never seen inside these pages. But I think it's a situation of it shows you some of the magical tricks you can do with the musical save thing. But we're going to open it up and we're going to see it here together for the first time. So Book of Patterns. Here we go. Oh, it's really nice. It's made in a near... And it's like the, uh, the Book of Kells in Ireland, uh, here in Ireland we have the Book of Kells, you know, like ink, dropped ink in, in beautiful filigree patterns, <laughs> the Book of Patterns. This is your personal diary of spell weaving as you learn new drafts, record the threads in this volume for future reference and study. Not all of the drafts listed here will be encountered in your travels. Most weavers actually use fewer than a dozen drafts in their entire lifetime. Nevertheless, by familiarizing yourself with the knowledge in these pages, you will be prepared to deal with the events unforeseen by the elders. A wise spellweaver always writes in pencil. Yes, so you can rub it out. That's a good idea. This is great. It's a, a really nice, um, the pages are, like, that's a really high quality kind of slight card. It's near card quality. It's very nice. A nice color as well, kind of be off beige color. Oh, this is lovely opening and you can learn how to do the opening spell so that's obviously open doors ECED if you play in ECED I wonder does it make notes as well along with the sound chip and then you can learn these spells as you go along and you write them in that's very cool night vision rending healing shrinkage invisibility so we might we might have to sneak past a few people in the game warmth I suppose this probably part where we get very cold send people to sleep, sleep, and just little places for you to pencil in what the notes are as you're playing along in the game. And I suppose learning these spells are probably parts of the puzzles as well. Transcendence, and they give you transcendence here at the end. Unless somebody, did somebody else draw that in? Somebody else drew that in. So these two were actually drawn in, and they weren't drawn in in, um, yeah, they were drawn in in pen. They weren't actually drawn in or printed in. Okay, and if you're having trouble, this is where the reference card situation uh, is, is coming along. So you obviously, you hold, you hold the red in front of it and it reveals the hidden message inside. Quite cool. I won't be using that. So the book of patterns is kind of like a hint book, maybe? Anyway, ladies and gents, that really is Loom. There's not much more to say about the game. Actually, I'm going to leave them till the end. There is one thing I would like to add to this, and that is some protection from the elements. Now you're thinking, how do you do that? Well, I'll show you. A while back I got my hands on these plastic see-through covers and they turn into boxes. So I'm gonna do one up here 
for loom and I'm going to place it in to keep it safe from all of the pressures of the outside world. You have your box and you just slide your game into the box and they fit perfectly. You close it up and there she says, quite safe from the outside world and you can still see the art because they're nice and see-through, yet you can, you know, it can take a little bit of weight on it because these boxes are, you know, strong as well. They're strong and rigid, but also soft in a way, like it's a nice, nice plastic, and it just keeps the game safe. So there we go. Ladies and gents, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoy this. Hope you, if you've never heard of Loom, that you do check it out because it's kind of a cool game, kind of weird game. And uh, thank you again to Mr. Ortega for sending this game over to me here in Ireland. Again, you are an absolute gentleman. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. And you know, comment down below if you've played this or if you're into the game. And uh, thank you very much again for watching. My name is Jack. You've been watching Hit the Snake. What's in the box? Goodbye. <laughs>